message of grace is brought to you by Christian people who believe the Bible to be the Word of God and who appreciate its power and authority. Within the pages of the Bible itself, there is a God-given design for its study. Rightly dividing the Word of Truth is the key to understanding the Bible. We're glad you've joined us for another interesting look into God's infallible book as Richard Jordan, president of Grace School of the Bible, presents another in a series of messages designed to help you understand and enjoy the Bible. Let's join them now. We're glad you've joined us today. And again, we trust that our time together uh, will be a blessing and help to you. Uh, we trust that, you'll be, that you're with us each week here as we study together in God's Word right here in your living room on your television. And all you have to do is be tuned to this channel at this time and uh, we'll meet together. And our, we'll be here and the only question is for you to be there. So we trust that you do this. Why don't you be, help us with the program and uh, tell a friend about the broadcast and get them, invite them, get them listening in with you. That way you can sort of be a missionary to help others uh, hear and, and learn about the wonderful message of God's wonderful grace as uh, we pre preach the grace message right here, teach it out of the Word of God. We're going to look back at the book of Romans today. Uh, we started last time in, in sort of a, a, a review of, of the book of Romans. We've been studying Romans for a long time, going through the book. And we can't, in just a couple of 30-minute studies, uh, teach, uh, reteach what we've studied for so many months uh, in, in, in some detail. But what I'm trying to do is to kind of go through the places in the book of Romans where Paul marks out the, the logical steps and the progression in the logic and the thinking of what he's teaching. And he does that with the, with the, the repeated use of the word, therefore. Uh, the word therefore is a word of logic. It's a word of, it's a conclusion uh, based upon what's been said. Here's the evidence, here's the information, here is the conclusion that can be drawn from that information. And uh, we went through the first uh, uh, three of those uh, therefores last time. Uh, and I mentioned to you that some famous preacher somewhere down in the annals of time said that when you read a, a therefore, always ask, wherefore is the therefore therefore? In other words, what's it there for? What went before it to bring you to this conclusion? And the conclusions are very important because as you see the logic that Paul uses through the book of Romans, he says in chapter 1 that, that, that he wanted the, the Romans to be established in sound doctrine. At the end of the book, he tells them that, that, that the information he's written to them has established them, will establish them, does establish them in sound doctrine. So if you and I want to be established as Paul desired us to be, then it's, it's the progression of doctrine through the book of Romans that's going to orient us to God's grace. And uh, one of the ways of understanding that is the, the use of these therefores. Now chapter 5, verse number 1 is the next one. We've seen the one in chapter 2 and chapter 3. Now chapter 5, verse 1, Therefore, being justified by faith, and we studied last time how that, that God has justified us by faith. The condemnation of sin, all of sin comes short of the glory of God. You're a sinner, I'm a sinner. Your grandparents, my grandparents, we're all sinners all the way back as far. I mean, I don't care how, where you, you know, you might be a blue blood and your ancestors might have been, might have swam, might, might have paddled a birch bark canoe, but you're still a sinner because we're all related to Adam. We all go back to the same origin and we're sinners. If you don't understand that, well, then just look around you. And I understand that people kind of get detached from life sometimes and don't like to admit they are. You know, we look around us and we see wicked things going on and terrible things and, 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 and all kind of oh, sinful habits going on and practices, you know. And people just say, well, that's the way people are. And that's right. That's, that's the way people are. We're sinners. And sinners need a Savior. The wage of sin is death. And God has provided for us a, a, a salvation in His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, every religion in the world, all the great world religions, they have God, and they have a standard that you're to meet, and they have God expecting you to meet the standards, but Christendom is different. The God of Christianity doesn't say, the God of the Bible doesn't say, meet my standards or I whack you. He says, here, you can't meet them. I'll meet them for you. I'll provide for you what you can't provide for yourself. That's what grace is. Grace is something you need, but you don't deserve. It's God providing for you what you can't provide for yourself. That's the genius of the grace of God as revealed in the Word of God. 
we'll let all the other religions of the world have the, all the other kind of gods. We're just going to stick to the God of the Bible who accomplishes for us what we need more than anything, and that's redemption. That's forgiveness. That's justification to be declared righteous before God, to be made the righteousness of God in Him. And you have it by faith. Therefore, being justified, declared righteous, by faith. You see, faith is the only thing you can do without doing anything. If God's going to give you something that you can't provide for yourself, it's going to have to be a gift. And if it's a gift, you can't work for it, you can't pay for it. All you can do is say thank you and accept it. And the way you receive the gift of God's grace is simply by believing. It's by faith, by trusting His Word on the matter and believing what He believes. Now, when we're justified by faith, He says, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have. You see, when you are justified by faith in Christ and Him alone, then we have some things. God provides us with some things. And Paul is going to start telling us how our relationship with, with God has changed as a result of our, our justification in Christ. We have what? Peace with God. Through our Lord Jesus Christ. Man, ma mankind, by our very nature, is, is at enmity, hatred. We're enemies of God. Ephesians chapter number 2, Paul talking about uh, you and me before we have justification, before we meet Christ, before we have peace with God through the Lord Jesus Christ. Ephesians 2, 1, Paul says, Who, who were dead in, in, in trespasses and sins, wherein in time past you walked, according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now works in the children of disobedience, among whom also we all had our conversation in time past, in the lust of the flesh, and, the, and fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature... The children of wrath, even as others, at war with God. That was our nature. But you see, through the cross work of the Lord Jesus Christ, God has made peace available to everybody. Romans chapter 5 verse number 9, he says, much more than being now justified by His blood, we shall be saved from wrath through Him. For when we were enemies, Colossians 1, he says that, that you who were alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, not just that we were doing things that displeased Him, but we were doing things that we knew displeased Him, doing them to spite Him. Oh, you know how that works, don't you? Yeah. You got someone that you're angry at and you're mad at and you want to get at them and you know they don't like something and you do it just to make them angry. That was her attitude toward God. For if when we were enemies, not when we had changed our mind and had become friends or were seeking Him or were trying, but when we were enemies, going to do it our way, not true. I don't care what you tell me, I'm going to do it my way. We were reconciled to God, listen, by the death of His Son. Much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by His life. And not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. You see, God's attitude toward man today is one of grace and peace. And God, in the person of His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, has provided a cessation of the hostility. But more than just the hostility ceasing, the reason for the hostility has been done away. And now there's peace with God. Verse 2 in Romans 5, he says, By whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand. 
You see, not only can we look back at, our, at, at Calvary and say, because of Calvary, the penalty of sin is paid for, and I have peace with God. I can look around me now in life, and I can say, this, this grace of God, it isn't just something that keeps me out of hell, and it isn't just something that's going to take me to heaven. It's something that is mine right now. You see where he says much more we're reconciled through the death of his son, much more we should be saved by his life? You know what life is? The word life means the ability to relate to your circumstances. <laughs> it's what you're living right now. You're alive. Life is what you're experiencing right now. And right now we have his life living in our life. And it's His life in our life that gives our life in time meaning and purpose. And we have access to that by, by faith into this grace wherein we stand. The word access is a wonderful word. It, it, it means to take by the hand and to lead someone into, in, into the presence and to introduce them to someone else, to give an introduction to. We use the word in computer activity. You want to access the information. If you have a computer, and uh, I hope you, <laughs> if you have one, I hope you're glad you do. Uh, if you have a computer and you have a hard drive, and you've got information on that hard drive. I had a situation recently where uh, a man sent me a message, on the, an email message, and he attached a file to it that he wanted me to read. And so when I downloaded the email, the computer program that I'm using on the internet downloaded the file that was attached. And so I read the email message, and it said, look for the, this, this file and read it. And so I looked, and I couldn't find the file. And I kept looking. I looked all over, and I wrote, I, I wrote him back, and I said, well, maybe it, didn't, maybe it didn't transfer. Do it again. Three times he sent me that file, <laughs> and three times I couldn't find it. And so I gave up, and he, he sent, me, sent it to me by snail mail. Just put it in an envelope and stamp on it, sent it to me, and I got it and read it and disposed of it. Two or three weeks later... I was sitting at my computer, just sitting there doodling around, looking, and I found the file, all three of them, downloaded right where they ought to be. Now, you know, they were there all the time. The problem was I didn't know the command sequence to access the information. It was there. But I couldn't get to it. It took three steps to get to it, and I was going two of them. And when I got to the second one, I thought I should be there, and it wasn't. And I said, well, it's not there. And I was one step short. <laughs> Access is the ability to get to the information, draw it out, and use it. We use that term every day. Your Bible is just as modern as... Uh, the computer board that you sit at. By faith we have access. We have the ability to go in and get the life of Christ, this grace wherein we stand, and have it live in us. Why? Because we've been just, because who God's made us in Christ. And rejoice in hope of the glory of God. I've got a past, the penalty of sin is taken care of through the blood of Christ. I've got the present. The power of sin in my life has been broken. And I have the life of Jesus Christ in me now to live. And in the future I have the glory of God. Don't ever think that salvation is just pie in the sky by and by. But don't ever think it isn't. If your religion won't tell you where you're going when you die, it isn't worth a dead horse. 
If it can't give you the absolute present tense confidence that, you're gonna, that, that, that you have eternal glory in your future, if you've got some nutball place like purgatory to go and pay a little more, if you're so blasphemously self-righteous as to think that Jesus Christ, when He purged our sins by His own blood at Calvary, didn't pay for all your sins and He needs your little puny efforts to help you along, if you're that blasphemously self-righteous, you'll find out that rather than purgatory, you're going to die and go to hell. And you're going to live as long as God lives, pay for your sins as long as He pays, as He lives in a devil's hell that Jesus Christ died to keep you out of if you just let Him do it. But if you've got to have a part of it and you're going to pitch your righteousness against His righteousness, you'll never get out. You'll pay long as God lives for being so self-righteous as to think your righteousness is as good as God's. Again, we're going to let everybody else, all the other religions, have that kind of God. And we're going to trust the God of the Bible that just gives it to us as a free gift. And when he does, he gives us a secure past, a living present, and a glorious prospect for the future. There is a sweet by and by for us. We live in the nasty now and now. The life of Christ lives in us. And then out there, our position in Christ has given us all this. It's, it, we have a wonderfully changed life. Now, the next, the next one of these therefores is in chapter 6. And it carries on the same idea of our identity in Christ and uh, the, the, the position that we have in Christ. Romans chapter 6, verse number 3. Paul says, Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into His death? Therefore, therefore, we are buried with Him by baptism into death that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. Now notice carefully. Therefore, because of the position that we have in Christ now, having been baptized into Jesus Christ, and I, I'll say to you again what we've said to you just about every time I've read that verse to you, that baptism has nothing to do with water. It has nothing to do with some religious ceremony or sacrament performed or some ordinance administered by some preacher or some priest in some physical way. You know, as well as, your, as you know your own name, that no water ceremony, no priestly action, no preacher's uh, uh, performance is going to put you into contact with God Almighty. God is a spirit. And the only way you're going to be placed into Jesus Christ is by the Spirit of God. Is a spiritual baptism. Not a water ceremony, not a physical baptism, but a baptism made without hands. As Colossians chapter 2 talks about. This is the one baptism by the one Spirit into the one body of Christ. And we're placed into Him. And because of our position in Christ... We are buried with Him by baptism into death. And Paul's conclusion here deals with the position that we have in Christ. By being baptized into Christ, we've been made a part of His death and of His burial and His resurrection and His ascension into heaven and His glory there. And we've been given the privilege of, of, of sharing in that glorification of His Son, of God's Son, that's why he says, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we should walk in newness of life. You see, at salvation, we become one with Christ. And from that point on, God views us as his own dear son. That's why Paul says, I'm crucified with Christ. How do you get crucified with Christ? By one spirit are we all baptized into one body. Don't you know that as many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into His death? We're crucified with Him. His death becomes ours. And God looks at us. God looks down at His Son at Calvary and He sees us. Then looks at us and He sees His Son. 
I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet it's not I, but Christ lives in me. You see, we have a position equal to that of Christ because we are in Christ. His life becomes ours and we're in Him. Being in Him makes us new creatures. Paul said, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. That verse has nothing to do with your conduct or your behavior. It has to do with your position and your identity. God literally makes you His workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God before ordained that we should walk in them. You see, this thing about being saved is a supernatural business. This is God's work. This isn't something that is accomplished on the basis of human effort and human design. This is supernatural activity. This is God working. And we become His workmanship, His creatures. Because of that position we have in Christ, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God before ordained that we should walk in them, the next thing Paul does in Romans 8, and we're going to have to move on now, the next therefore, therefore, Romans 8, 1, there, there is therefore no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Paul now tells us of the results of our position in Christ. You say, what is the therefore, therefore? Well, chapter 7, verse 25. I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord, so then with, my mind, with the mind I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh the law of sin. The issue of serving. You're going to serve God or you're going to serve sin. Now that you have this new position in Christ, you're, you're this new creature in Christ, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God before ordained that we should walk in them. This new creature was created to accomplish some things for God. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, there's... There, 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 there is therefore no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. There's the issue of, of, of serving God under grace in the identity that we have in Christ Jesus. Rather than having to deal with God on the basis of fear, we come as sons, and we walk after the Spirit, and we serve Him because of the position and the identity that God has given us in Christ. We're absolutely pure and undefiled in God's sight. We have a position of absolute righteousness that results in, in, in no condemnation coming to us. And God, uh, God gives us this position in Christ. And because of that position in Christ, we're free to go out as His sons and live and serve in the confidence of being sons. Verse 14 of Romans 8, he says, For as many as are led by the Spirit, they are the sons of God. You see, the fact is, who you believe you are is going to determine how you live. How you think about yourself is going to determine how you feel about yourself and how you function in your life. <clears throat> you feel like you're worthless, punked out, of no value. You know what you're, how you're going to feel? You're going to feel worthless, punked out, of no value. If you feel like you're a child of God, if you think like you're a child of God, you understand you're a child of God, that God has loved you, He's made you more than conquerors in Christ, you know how you're going to feel? You're going to feel differently, aren't you? You're going to look at life differently. You're going to live life differently. You see, our service is based on who we are in Christ. Now, the next logical point that he makes is in chapter number 9, verse 18. Therefore hath he mercy on, on whom he will have mercy, and on whom he will harden, he hardens. And Paul is showing in Romans 9, 10, and 11 that God is, is just in giving the Gentiles this position. He's just in giving us this position in Christ. The word Christ means Messiah. The Lord Jesus Christ was Israel's Messiah. 
And he had a prophesied, pre-planned purpose proclaimed in Israel's Messiah that they rejected, of which the Gentiles had no part. How is it that God could take Israel's Messiah and give him to us Gentiles? Because God had an unprophesied, secret purpose in, his, in the Messiah, and that when Israel rejected it, God set them aside temporarily in order to accomplish his secret purpose in Christ, and then he'll go back and finish. He's just delayed his purpose with Israel until he accomplishes something that he didn't tell anybody about, that is, form the body of Christ. And that's why the last one of these logical progressions is in chapter 12. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Paul's final conclusion about grace involves what our response should be to all that God has done for us. And what our response should be is just to present our bodies living sacrifice. Our motivation for service is just, just gratitude to God for all that He's done. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercy. I don't command you. I just ask you. If I gave you a gift, I wrapped up this morning a package to send to my grandchildren from my wife and I, their grandma and their granddad. In that package were presents, some gifts. When they get those gifts, you know what we want them to do? We don't want them just to throw them out and not use them. We want them to take them out and enjoy them. I don't want them to bring me $10 and try to pay me for them. You know what I want them to do? I just want them to say, thank you, Grandpa. Thank you, Grandma and hug my neck and love me. That's what God wants. That's the response to grace that you and I should have. And when you understand it and are established in it, that's the natural response to the grace of God. Thanks for listening today. Until next time, Maranatha. Thank you, Brother Jordan, for that message from the Word of God. Friends, we have a cassette tape we'd like you to have to go along with today's study. The tape is entitled, The Logic of the Roman's Road. It's yours free of charge. It's our way of saying thanks for listening. We'll be happy to see that you receive your free copy along with free subscription to our monthly Bible study, The Grace Journal, if you simply write us here at The Message of Grace. The address should be on your screen. That's The Message of Grace, Box 97, Bloomingdale, Illinois, 60108. If you prefer, you can also call us during regular business hours at area code 708-529-0520. Request tape offer on number 372. That's tape offer number 372. The Message of Grace is a ministry of Grace School of the Bible, and we're glad you've been with us here today. If our study together has been a help to you, we'd be happy to put you in touch with a Bible study in this area where the message of God's wonderful grace is proclaimed from His rightly divided word. And friend, if you are still not sure of salvation, that your sins are forgiven, and that you have eternal life as a present possession, let us know. I'll be happy to send you some gospel literature that will show you the way. That address again is the Message of Grace, Box 97, Bloomingdale, Illinois, 60108. Thanks for being with us today, and God's best on next time for another Message of Grace.